Come along with me today as we look at what may be some of the oldest rocks exposed on the surface of the Earth. These rocks and another display which I'll be showing you are from the Beartooth Mountains and in particular Beartooth Pass. My good friend Art up in Montana, he several years ago stopped all along Beartooth Highway pretty much wherever he can stop and collected me a beautiful assortment and collection. So let's check it out today. Uh, welcome back to the channel if you've been with us before. And those of you who are new, welcome to Chris's Granite Paradise. Let's look at some rocks and some geology together. Beartooth Pass is along US Highway 212 between Red Lodge and Cook City, Montana. The highway switchbacks up and over part of the Beartooth Plateau, crossing about 3 billion years of geology in that short distance. Archaean and other Precambrian rocks were lifted 15,000 feet or so during the Laramide orogeny. So let's take a look at this display. This is kind of historic because this is all going to change because now the new Beartooth rocks won't fit here. So I'm going to need to either remove these rocks on the lower shelves so that I could put the rocks I just showed you here or move everything somewhere else. But I haven't decided yet. But let's look at some of these rocks, shall we? It's kind of a rainy day. It's not really rain, raining enough to have stuff wet. So I brought the spray bottle along. The geology of Beartooth Pass is fascinating. Uh, again, some of the oldest rocks exposed on the surface of the earth are found there. Uh, I've read that some of the metamorphic remnants that are mixed in with the relatively newer igneous rocks are as much as 3.9 billion years old. That's a long time. And I don't know enough to know which of these are the really old ones and which of these are only a billion or so years old. I know that some of these volcanic dikes of this material, which is a porphyry, these are supposedly about 1.8 billion years old. And if you go through the bear tooth, you'll see these dikes everywhere, dikes and sills of all different kinds of porphyries. In my Yellowstone River Common Yet Unique series, the episode on porphyries, we touched on a wide array of porphyritic rocks, most of which come from these relatively younger dike and sill intrusions into the much older rocks we are seeing in today's video. Some of these rocks I collected myself and I have been there, but I don't know enough about the exact geology to know which rocks are which, other than the porphyries. Again, here's another piece of porphyry, but there are granites, granodiorites. There's this material that fractures almost like slate. In fact, the frost is kind of destroying it here, but it's got, it has a lot of metal in it. Which brings me, oh, look at the veins on that. Let me spray that one off. Of course, as you can imagine, the frost action on that pass is intense. Uh, most of the year it's buried in snow, extremely low temperatures, a lot of freeze thaw action going on. These metallic iron rich faces appear to be where it broke along very thin veins Probably hematite would be my guess in an otherwise mafic metamorphic rock of some kind. Here you can see some quartz veins. Looks like an amphibolite, but again with these hematite veins and the rock tends to break along those. Very pretty. Geologically speaking, there is what's known as the Stillwater Complex. And I think that's also newer. That was a huge igneous body that contains a lot of metallic ores. In fact, that's why there was so much gold mining, silver, 
and other things around Cook City and places like that were because of the Stillwater complex. I'm gonna show you now a, <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say I've been using it as a doorstop. Uh, it's a nice doorstop though. That's what you get to do when you have lots of rocks. When I was a teenager, we were driving four wheelers around, my brother and I, and we walked off the highway between Cook City and Silvergate. There's a pile of cores. Like somebody had dumped a truckload of cores back in there. Probably back when they were still mining. They were all overgrown with ferns and stuff. I grabbed a handful of them and cut them to length, glued them together, and made this what I call a paperweight. So I'm guessing that these are part of the Stillwater complex. On a sunny day, you would see a lot of pyrite in these. But here's a really cool xenolith. You've got that looks like a porphyry there in the middle. All kinds of stuff. I wish I would have grabbed more. But remember, you know, I didn't own a house back then, didn't have anywhere to put stuff, so I, I didn't have a reason to collect a lot of stuff. I just took enough to make this little project. According to my research, the road does cut directly through this rich 2.7 billion year old treasure trove and a number of today's specimens are likely representing it. But the overall geology is fascinating. Again, here we can see one of the porphyries. These occur as those dikes and sills that I mentioned. But just gr granitic rocks. They're so different from each other. This is one of Art's favorites. He loves this orange stuff. I have a couple of smaller pieces of it. This is much bigger. Really pretty material. Here's another porphyry. Interesting geology there. See, I would call this an andesitic porphyry this grayer one and then these brown ones are different content they're all different from each other now the rocks that they're saying uh, from what i was able to research that are really old could be the stuff like this they say that within the diorites and granites there are lenses or remnants of even older rocks that are extremely metamorphosed archaean in age so they're archaean basically is like from the very beginning. I mean, these are the first rocks that were floating on the surface of an otherwise molten world, you know. But in the case of this one, obviously it's been metamorphosed since then and changed into a nice. Yeah, this is spectacularly green. The overall rock is green, but I think this here was like a fracture and even more epidote got in there. So that's vibrant. If we turn it over this way. That's what the actual rock consists of. A mafic gneiss of some kind is what I would call it. Amphibolite. Amphibolite gneiss. You geologists, is that a correct term? Very hard solid gneiss in this case. Here's this bigger rock turned over. Amazing colors, really colorful. And these orange deposits on here, they're very rough. They almost feel stalactitic of some kind. Like there was a wide vein there and minerals deposited. Yeah, I like this stuff with the hematite veins running through it. A huge shout out to Art and his wife for being the amazing heroes of today's video. When your friend sends you that amount of rocks piled in the front, that's when you know you are loved. Along with all these fascinating rocks from Beartooth Pass, 
Art also sent me with his beloved wife, who was on her way to Texas, all of these flat Yellowstone rocks. I've been doing some research and I guess it is called armoring. When the conditions are just right, the bottom of the river will become basically tiled with flat rocks. And I already have a bunch of these uh, from before. And now with all of these, I'm actually planning on, this will be a separate video obviously, but I'm thinking right there, I'm gonna clear an area and I'm gonna make a patch of armored riverbed with sand and make it realistic with some driftwood and things of that nature. But I bring this up because the Yellowstone River, of course, drains a wide area that includes the Beartooth Mountains. But even more specifically, I'm gonna insert a clip here from a video I did, I believe it was last summer, of Rock Creek, which flows out of the Bear Tooths immediately below the pass, actually, flows out through Red Lodge, Montana, and eventually drains into the Yellowstone. Let's take a look at that clip. And here, what I mostly see are granitic rocks, gneisses, and this would be a typical piece of what I re I'm referring to when I say gneiss. Basically, stripy granite. <laughs> In this case, it appears to me mostly uh, biotite mica because it reflects kind of gold in the sunlight. I'm not sure if it's showing there. It's very abundant in Rock Creek. In fairly short order, one can make a really nice, nice garden. In the case of Rock Creek, one of my favorite things to collect or at least look at are these porphyritic stones. Sometimes these can occur as basalts erupting from a volcano, but in the case of this canyon, uh, I think I already mentioned this canyon is a wide U-shaped valley that was carved out by glaciers and now Rock Creek has taken up residence in, in the bottom of it. But the river, is full of these basaltic rocks with the phenocrysts of feldspar. Every color you can imagine. There's pinks, reds, sometimes with beautifully formed crystals. And the way these occur, as, as one drives up Beartooth Pass, there are literally thousands of these dikes and sills, basically mag magma intruded again and again into all this granite and gneiss as it was being uplifted. And so basically every dike and every sill is a slightly different chemical composition and hence an infinite variety. Probably a third of the rocks in this river are actually of that material. Most of the rest, of course, is granite and gneiss. Very nice gneiss, by the way. Yet another nice nice from Rock Creek. By the way, just to get your juices going about that riverbed project, here are the other flat rocks that I have. Again, many of these were given to me by Art, and they are a spectacular variety. Let's look at some Rock Creek specimens though, if I can get back there. Here are those specimens that I collected on that trip. I didn't collect much, uh, especially stuff that I already had, because I was traveling by bus on that occasion. So I was gonna have to basically put whatever I collected in my backpack. <laughs> As you can imagine, you can't bring too much in a backpack. But again, just some different porphyries. This one caught my attention because it seems to be a venturing, which I did not know was in Rock Creek, but this is from Rock Creek. It's either a venturing or simply another greened up form of granite. 
not really sure there. But what I am sure about are the porphyries. That was a fun trip. Here we're looking at a porphyry that I completely cut, shaped, and polished all the way around. This I collected out of Rock Creek quite a few years ago. But it's just a spectacular example of those dikes and sills that I keep mentioning. And again, for, according to my research, these are about 1.7 billion years old and they were inserted into rocks that were... Oh, I forgot now. 2.6... 2. 2. Anywhere up to 3.9. Fascinating geology. And it makes for pretty rocks, too. This has really been a fun discussion on the rocks from Beartooth Pass. I am sure that this video will hold special meaning to those of you who are familiar with the highway and its amazing pass over the plateau. And for the rest of you, I trust that, if you are still watching at this point, you obviously enjoyed seeing some really old and interesting rocks from early in our Earth's history. To me it is a thrill to behold rocks from those early times, even when I may not know what they are. As I have said before, God has always been creating and recreating and he always will be doing so. Or in geologists' terminology, the earth is continually being reshaped and it is a privilege in our short and fleeting time here to be able to scratch the surface and wrap our minds around such long periods of time. Thanks for coming along and I hope to see you on the next one.